Welcome to another Nature Discovery Screencast. Look over my shoulder and watch as I look for the pure beauty found in nature from the raw videos taken on one of my photo walks. The date of this photo walk was April 12, 2017, and it took place in several locations around Cabarrus County, North Carolina, and that is in the United States. Today we're using Final Cut Pro X on a Mac, and we will be screening this raw video footage as our preliminary video production workflow. You can also watch our 30 Seconds of Nature screencast where we take selected raw footage and turn it into 30 seconds or longer videos to be used on Nature's Wild Things website. Okay, let's take a look today at the footage. And uh, we've got a beautiful dragonfly here. It's a common white-tailed dragonfly. It's an adult male. And let's just look at uh, look at the video a little bit. We can see him just sitting there breathing. Beautiful pattern on its wings. And uh, females look completely different. Uh, immature males look different too. So uh, that's the male. Now we'll go down to one of my favorite dragonflies, the blue dasher dragonfly. And this is an adult male dragonfly here. It has its uh, colorations for an adult male. Beautiful little dragonfly. These are all around a pond um, setting. The pond was actually a retention pond for a large uh, parking lot complex and it's one of my favorite places to go here in uh, Cabarrus County to find the damselflies and the dragonflies. But there's a lot of other little interesting creatures around the pond too. Here we have an unknown bee or fly or it could be a bee fly. <laughs> These uh, cute little guys are uh, around and about occasionally I'm going to have to do some research on this one, figure out what what it is, but uh, clean it up a little bit before he takes off. Beautiful little insect there. Now we have another uh, dragonfly here. This is the Eastern Pondhawk, and this is a female. Um, probably one of the most commonly seen dragonflies around the pond that I visit regularly and uh, we can see them see her just uh, sitting here breathing they actually suck air into little holes that are located on his main body part right underneath the top wings there so they actually breathe through the side of their body air goes down through their tail back up to the lungs I believe I think that's all to help regulate the uh, heat uh, the cooling of of this beautiful little dragonfly now I have to to give you all a news flash here this uh, this is actually an alien spacecraft and I have the proof here um, Eastern Pondhawk dragonflies are actually controlled by aliens and I have some photo evidence that we can look at here just to prove it to you so you see this beautiful little dragonfly well let's take a look at the photo evidence I have here this is directly in between the wings and the back of the uh, eastern pond hawk and uh, it's a faceless alien with a low-cut dress I I just don't know what to say beyond that so we have 
faceless aliens inhabiting this dragonfly. But that's not all. Right here we have a masked alien controlling this dragonfly. And even scarier than that, the brains of the whole operation are right up here. Now, if that isn't an alien, I don't know what is. <laughs> okay, believe it or not, conspiracy theory time. Let's move on to the butterflies here. This is a beautiful little pearl crescent butterfly, part of the brush-footed family of butterflies. And uh, showing us our, a good view of the upper wing here and a good view of the uh, lower part of the wing. Just a beautiful little butterfly. I like the under wings better. Uh, kind of black and yellow on top. But uh, I really like the pattern on the underside. Now this is a damselfly. Very uh, long and skinny. Flying needles, some people used to call them. I think my grandmother used to call them flying needles many many varieties of damselflies and for this video I'm not going to try to name them all because in this video I think we're going to have quite a few dragonflies and they just get me confused as to what's what but in the uh, individual videos I produce from this raw video we'll try to identify them so that you can start telling these uh, dragon or damselflies apart from each other now most of the time when you see them in most of the pictures you see, um, you see them pose just like this. This, you know, 99% of the photographs you see. But there's more to these dragonflies than this pose. Here we have one that I believe is cleaning up. I just thought that was an interesting piece of video because so often you see the standard pose <laughs> you hardly ever see the other one. All right, let's also look at uh, what we've got here. It's a yellow jacket, but what kind of yellow jacket is it? I've been doing research, and I found pretty close matches to this yellow jacket, but what I found was it pretty closely matches the western yellow jacket only found in the western part of the United States and I'm definitely not in the western part of the United States I'm here in Cabarrus County North Carolina so either we got a bee that got away or I'm just plain old misidentifying it which is <laughs> entirely possible but uh, you can see from this video that it's a it's a beautiful little bee in there He's cleaning up. Bees just fascinate me because you can see a yellow jacket and yet there are different kinds and varieties and patter patterns on the, the back and the body. I, I just am fascinated by that and will be trying my best in the future to start identifying the different types of uh, species out there and uh, putting them on Nature's Wild Things website. All right, to keep you bird lovers happy, we have a killdeer. And these killdeers are part of the plovers and lapwings family. And they are all fall under the shorebirds order. Interesting uh, uh, hunting that he's doing here. And... Uh, beautiful little bird, some cute little mannerisms that he has occasionally with the bobbing of the head up and down just like that. And uh, if we're good he'll shake his tail for us too. That <laughs> seems to be some of the mannerisms. These are the birds that actually have their nest right on the ground in open fields, pastures, things like that. And if you approach them, they will start carrying on and flopping around, pretending they have a broken wing. 
and draw you away from the location of their nest. So you could uh, literally walk right in and step on their eggs if you're not careful. Although if you get close to the nest you'll be distracted by mom and dad here just throwing a fit and pretending to have a broken wing and carrying on. He's doing a little hunting today. I think he somewhere in here he actually find something to eat somewhere in a hole picks up a little grub or a snail or something and eats it all right let's move on to the pond now and uh, all sorts of damselflies can be found uh, all sorts of varieties right now they are uh, almost the first to emerge between the dragonflies and the damselflies and uh, now there's both at the pond as you can see from the photos but uh, these two are just the males on the top the females on the bottom and this is the beginning of the process for the mating and we'll look at that a little closer in the next clip you see the pond there and uh, they like finding a little reed sticking out of the water and and just being around and uh, notice in the water <laughs> what we have there I I believe is the uh, nymph of or the uh, underwater version of a dragonfly or a damselfly I'm not even begun to try to identify the nymphs from from each other but the first half of these damselflies and dragonflies life takes place in the in the water here and uh, I'm not sure which this guy is here look around in the water a little bit more and here we find uh, when I say they they begin in the water uh, they're an insect and they have ectoskeleton shedding going on occasionally as all uh, some of the insects do and these little critters live uh, underwater and at the right time they crawl out of the water up a reed like this and then they proceed to emerge from their ectoskeleton skin and deploy wings and we'll see an upcoming nature discovery podcast we'll watch the process in uh, time elapsed photography a little bit to see how they uh, literally pump up their wings and then eventually fly away and uh, let's just play this one here now uh, there we can see it a little better we can see the uh, critters moving around now let's just see if there's anything else on this video I think that's about it now we're going to move right into a video here where we have two damselflies in the process of uh, mating here and uh, you can see they have the male on the top has little graspers at the very end of his tail that he literally grabs the neck of the female and then uh, proceeds to hold her like this they say the male sex organ is in the body not in the tail and yet he stores his sperm at the very end of the tail so he actually goes through a process of uh, basically pumping the sperm up into his body and uh, she will and I don't know why the wait so long but she will eventually move her tail up uh, make a union and uh, the mating process will begin. Let's, uh, I think I have a five or six minutes of video there. Let's skip ahead to where she actually joins up here and take a look in uh, slow motion if we can at the process. She, she twists her body around and brings her tail up to the underside of the male. Let's see, I'm, I'm skimming through it one frame at a time. 
60 frames per second video that I record. And here the males <laughs> seems to be helping her get up to where she needs to be. And there she's in the process of uh, beginning the, the mating process there. Now we'll just play this real time here a little bit. And uh, this process is going to go on for five, six, seven minutes here. And on the other end of the process, we, we see them eventually uh, on clasp from each other. Form a, almost a perfect little heart when they do this. The dragonflies really uh, do the same thing. And I really like catching them in the mating process here because this is the one <laughs> and only time that can really help you identify the male and the female of the species. The coloration changes or differences. And uh, it, it is a confusing world to me anyway of these uh, damselflies and dragonflies. And I really appreciate sometimes having the ability to, okay, that one on the bottom is a female, and that's the colorations of the female, and that one on the top is the male. So it really helps in identification. Now, after the male and the female are done mating, the females will go right down to the water. They'll fly down to the water, and they'll grab something uh, to hold on to, and they will insert their tails into the water or uh, uh, some of the species even have sharp little uh, protrusions that they'll cut the reed and they'll deposit their eggs in the water or in the reed and from those eggs then will grow that uh, larvae There were two here, but I think eventually we have a, a third one show up. There are some uh, unorthodox methods of <laughs> sitting when you're depositing your eggs. And here comes a third one. I believe we'll see all three of them depositing eggs. And you can see there different colorations between the, the one in the middle and the, the ones on the end. So we'll have to do some research to try to figure out which species we're actually looking at here when we produce the videos that will go on Nature's Wild Things website. That's what we're trying to do with that Nature's Wild Thing is uh, produce a, a field guide you might say to uh, these critters. So when you see them in the field or you have a photo of them you can start trying to identify what it is that you have. It's so hard to do online uh, with a thousand different locations to go to and little fuzzy thumbnails everywhere. So we're trying to, to help with uh, creating our own field guide. And there we back into another uh, pair mating here again. Now this was the most interesting thing of the day. I, I just was totally blown away by what happened here. And I didn't know what happened and transpired here. And doing some uh, close analysis of these next two videos you're going to be seeing, I think we're seeing something that not many people in the United States have seen and documented. And... Uh, what you're going to see here is uh, a damselfly, uh, many damselflies here, but let's just uh, start the video and watch. I'm, 
I'm simply filming a damselfly sitting in the water waiting for maybe some egg laying to happen and a whole bunch of uh, these damselflies start circling around and acting all excited and I'm like I don't know what they're doing I don't know what it is but I'm gonna film it and uh, in the little viewfinder of my camera I had no idea what I was looking at or trying to film I saw what looked like a reed in the water and I saw these damselflies kind of flying around something so I thought well maybe there's something there for them to eat and what I discovered was a damselfly had gotten grabbed by a water stick insect now a water stick to insect is part of the water scorpions family and they're part of the true bugs, cicadas, hoppers, aphids, and allies order of insects. So what you're seeing is a water stick insect. And looking them up on iNaturalist where people can place their sightings and then from those sightings you can look at the map and see where these things are found. And what I discovered was... Um, there's only three other sightings and photographs of uh, this water stick insect in the United States. So I don't think this is something that the uh, normal dragonfly and damselfly enthusiasts uh, have seen before. And let's take a look at the second video. Here we have what appears like the damselflies trying to save, trying to disengage the trapped damselfly from the mouth of this water stick insect. And they're trying their darndest to get there. They, they just released it, and yet the water stick insect grabbed it back again. Now, at this point, two or three minutes underwater, I believe that damselfly is 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 dead but I just uh, never imagined the uh, the gang ganging together of five six seven of these would appear to be male damselflies trying to save their their kin there I just it just blew my mind when I saw it and you can see the legs moving on the uh, on the water stick insect. So we'll be producing a, a uh, 30 second or a minute video out of this and uh, try and take some of the camera shake out and so you, you, so you can see it as as good as you can. Maybe do a little uh, cropping and uh, zooming here panning around. Just fascinating to me. Just fascinating. Okay, now, I think that wraps up our photo walk around the pond, and I believe we have another nature discovery screencast in the can.